regular meeting uh, time is 12.04 on 126.21. Call to order. Deborah Sixta, Commissioner Sixta. Here. Commissioner Lesur. Here. Commissioner Mendola. Here. Commissioner Fawson. Here. Commissioner Sawaya. Okay, thank you. Pledge of Allegiance, are we getting a flag? We are. I guess we'll sit, because we're all sitting. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to, and to the, the Republic as one, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with our liberty and justice for all. For all. First item on the agenda is the approval of minutes for 11-24-20. Any changes? Somebody want to move to approve the minutes? So moved. Second? I'll second the approval. The second item is a consideration of public comments. If any of the public would like to address the advisory commission, um, they need not request permission in advance. Action taken as a result of public comments will be limited to directing staff to study the matter or rescheduling the matter for consideration. Any public comments? Okay. There were no public comments. Okay. Item three reports. I'm, I'm there twice. That's okay. A, Sylvia. Hi, Sylvia. COVID business recovery program report. Discuss, discussion and possible action. And here. Maybe it's. All right, there I go, I forgot, apologize for that. Okay, so I'm actually gonna start with a little bit of the retail and then move into the small business recovery. Um, basically, uh, I think we're all probably excited to get more retail in Kingman and, and to just try to keep this momentum would be great. Um, so as you know, we have Cal Ranch um, already announced that's coming that took about 50,000 square foot of the Kmart building. And uh, we're working with the grand opening with them and uh, as well with uh, Kingman Chamber. So we're going to be working with them. And when the dates come up, we'll, we'll let you know uh, for the nice grand opening event. And then we did post recently the Harbor Freight uh, uh, announcement, which is another uh, good one, co good company coming to Kingman. So now that Kmart Plaza is nice and full. Um, now I'll be redirecting some of my attention on some of the other plazas in town and trying to bring, uh, fill some of the suites there as well. I'd like to say we are, we do know Culver's is open, so keep keep visiting them. Let's keep them going. And Dutch Brothers and Philip Berto's is under construction. Uh, if you haven't seen it, um, went by the other day and it's looking good. And you know, eventually with Dutch Brothers, Philip Berto's, there's also two pads that are available next to them. So we'd like to get a couple more to fill those spaces as well. Um, okay, so small business recovery plans. Uh, first off, I'd like to kind of mention that all our small business recovery plans are listed on the choosekingman.com website that we have. If you go into choosekingman.com, go to do business here and the small business recovery plan programs, we have them all listed there. And really Josh and I do, um, we're together on a lot of these programs, so we'll probably be interacting on this discussion part right here. And then the other place for a lot of great information is our Kingman Economic Development Facebook page. So if, if you guys have not liked that or not following it, please do, because we do post a lot of information on that as well. 
So to start off with the facade improvement program, we, I'm continuing to work with businesses. Um, this program is citywide. I, I'd like to reiterate that we'd love to hear from more businesses throughout the city and give me a call and um, see if they'd like to participate in this program. But this one is for improving the building facade, like signs, paint doors, replace mm -hmm. windows. Um, so hopefully we can get more applicants with that. And we do. Um, right now I'm working with Bit of Heaven on signage. And so that will be a nice um, upgrade outside um, the, of their business um, facility. Uh, the other program is Parklet Headlets that we're working on. Um, as you know, we have Rickety Cricket and Floyd's Barbecue and Woodfire Pizza that has, I mean, Rickety Cricket and Diana's has completed their parklets, but um, we have Floyd's Barbecue and Woodfire Pizza in the process right now. And so with these expansions of the parklets, basically we can expand businesses beyond the building and they can serve more customers and you know, obviously during COVID, uh, the occupancy um, was reduced to 50%, but we had to uh, find ways to help uh, get more occupancy, and this is one of them. So th this program is more so for downtown area, and as parklets are done, I will definitely keep you posted. Uh, we Now we are also working on the Hound app, which is a phone app that... Um, businesses can place their promos or maybe gift certificates on that they'd like to um, offer to customers. If, if a customer downloads this app, anybody within 10 miles of the business um, can see the promos offered by these businesses. And the city is supplementing any fees that the business would normally pay to put these promotions on the MyHound app. So we'd like to encourage more participants in that program as well. Then last Friday, I spent a little time with the Arizona Local First um, rep, and we were, went around talking to businesses as well. And that's another membership, great membership program that businesses can take advantage of, and the city is sponsoring the memberships. One of the cool things they have right now is an online marketplace where businesses can feature their products on an online marketplace. and. Um, Arizona Local First has like, I don't know, 33,000 uh, followers on Facebook, and they would be promoting this online marketplace for um, you know people to view products all over Arizona. So we'd like to get some Kingman stores in on the marketplace. Um, and that's pretty much everything. I do have a little touch on the infill incentive district that we're offering, and it's um, really a waiver of building permit fees. And where I see this was really beneficial was with Cal Ranch, Harbor Freight, and that plaza, because they were in this district, and so they were able to uh, take advantage of this opportunity, and it really did, I believe, assist bringing the new retail to Kingman. And that's pretty much everything I got. We are looking at possibly expanding that to include some other commercial areas, and we will bring that back to you when, when we're doing that. That, that's pretty much it for me, and maybe Josh can um, continue on some of the other small business recovery plans we're doing. Thank you, Sylvia. Josh is next anyway. Mark? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Mark? Um, let me, let me before I go into the tourism report, just uh, finish up on some of the other um, okay. recovery program projects. So we have the Facebook marketing grants. We've got two that have completed and two that are under development. Another thing that we did is create a local Facebook marketing opportunity. We had a business that wasn't tourism related, want to participate. So we identified some funds, to create uh, the marketing grants for um, regular uh, non-tourism businesses that have been affected by COVID shutdowns and, um, and needed assistance. Um, we also concluded the shop local program with the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, there were 378 transactions that transpired as part of the program with over $20,000 in spend. Um, so we felt it was a pretty good uh, yeah. program for the first year and really want to congratulate the chamber for all of their efforts in uh, making that happen. Um, we uh, have been working on the Google My Business uh, audit. Um, with the initial audit that we did with the tourism businesses, we put up 361 pictures. Um, we've had uh, several do dozen edits. Um, there's been nearly 60,000 
our 600,000 views from the pictures that we've put up. We've also been working on another 650 businesses in town, looking at their Google, Bing, and Apple listings. Um, we found over 800 discrepancies from what their hours are, where their business is located, websites. Um, and so we've been calling those businesses. Um, I think we were, we're through the, with the second, uh, you know, we did an initial call, we've done a call back and we have one more call back before we close up and um, decide what to do with the businesses that haven't answered. Um, but we have several businesses that are um, happy that we've called, happy that we've looked into it, some that want assistance with claiming their Google My Business location. Um, so it, it's that's we think is going to be a really good program for getting Kingman up to date um, with those three platforms, especially since Apple Maps is the um, default map app on an Apple phone. So we want to make sure that they're all uh, updated on that one. And then our C source, I'm actually going to go for a little bit of that data um, in here, but we have identified and we've started uh, Google search engine marketing to um, geo locations based on um, what their activity or what highest activity we have them uh, coming in and doing around here. Uh, golf, Route 66, downtown, and then we have retarget marketing with our Grand Canyon West traffic. That's all that, all that I have for the recovery program. What did you say about Grand Canyon West? So with the visitors who are coming into Kingman, um, or the, the markets that are coming into here. We're looking at um, what regions in the country people are visiting and doing different things. Well, with Grand Canyon West, they haven't necessarily been to Kingman, so it's more or less we're retargeting out to those to try to let them know, you know, about what there is to do in Kingman um, uh, because, you know, they came close to this area and so they might have an interest in coming back. Oh, great. Good deal. Okay. Good job. Uh, item C, Industrial Park Report by Bennett. Oh, do you want me to go into the tourism oh. report? <laughs> I'm sorry, oh. I was just finishing up. Um, oh, okay. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's, go. let's go tourism. Go Kingman. All right. So um, I'd first like to start off by saying that we've uh, been working quite a bit on our social media um, programs. Uh, we did update our Go Kingman um, usernames to explore Kingman both on Facebook and Instagram. I think the name is still Kingman Visitor Center on Facebook, but we put in uh, the request a couple times and we're trying to get that resolved so that everything's Explore Kingman. Also started a Snapchat, Explore Kingman, Pinterest, Explore Kingman, and our Twitter has been account has been um, set over to Explore Kingman. And we did secure the URLs, explorekingman.com, explorekingman.org, explorekingman.org. Um, info. So we're pretty much um, pulling into the new branding that we had um, that this uh, commission had approved um, in the last fiscal year. Uh, we have also have the uh, um, hotel performance uh, report for uh, December. We had a uh, uh, occupancy of 56%. That was down about 4% from last year. And the rate was $66.80 which is down about 3% from last year. So overall revenue is down by about 7.5%. And, and for the 2020 annual, uh, the 12 months in 2020, our average occupancy was 63.5%. That was down about 6%. And the rates were at $68.83 on average, which was down 7%. Overall revenues down about 12.5%. So for Kingman, that's not too bad. A lot of communities in Arizona that are down 40, 60%. So for us to be in um, just though, just into the double digits at 12.5% is pretty good. Our marketing, I attended the virtual travel exchange conference in November and had uh, communications with nine tour operators um, from those appointments. And I've been corresponding back and forth with them. I've got another travel conference I'll be attending. It's a virtual one called the Go West Summit in the first week of March. Um, the uh, Arizona Office of Tourism Marketing Cooperative, we've got uh, the Google search engine marketing that I discussed before that we have uh, targeted based on our C-source data. We also advertise in the Arizona Drive Guide and Arizona State RV Travel Guide. So those are to hit the drive markets. Those are print publications for the winter. And we have the Lamar Billboard in Needles, um, uh, which is up uh, through April. Um, and then other projects we're working on is the, uh, of course, the Route 66 Festival that it discussed 
in the agenda. We've had another meeting on that. We're trying to do something um, maybe a little bit different and figure out uh, how to how to possibly do something this year, although we understand that we may not be able to put an event on this year, um, but I'll give more updates on that at a, a future meeting. The Route 66 drive through shield, um, we've had to put that back out to bid. None of the bids came in under 50,000. So we uh, re-released that and the bid opening is set uh, to take place um, next week. And then the Electric Vehicle Museum, we received a 1983 electric vehicle converted Porsche. And we've got uh, Tropica, which is a, a pretty um, pretty cool sportsy vehicle that's coming out of the Laughlin uh, car collect, classic car collection that we're gonna be bringing into Kingman to put into the museum down here. We've got several uh, vehicles that don't fit that are out in the parking lot. We're gonna move those over to public works so that they're in a safe, secure location. And then I wanna give um, some updates real quick that I got from the Arizona Office of Tourism. Let me just share a couple screens. So this is arrivalist data for Mojave County. Um, that is cell data collected by the Arizona Office of Tourism. And you can see what's been going on for um, this year. We had quite a dip there in March, April, and May, as everyone can pretty well expect. Um, but we had about the same kind of figures that we had last year, just everything was a little bit repressed. Our big spikes are Memorial Day um, and uh, July 4th and Labor Day as they were last year. And then for the locations that people are coming from, Los Angeles is the number one, Phoenix number two, Las Vegas number three. This is pretty much exactly the same as it was in uh, 2019. The only uh, changeover was after Salt Lake City, we have um, Tucson and then uh, Albuquerque, um, and those were flipped last year. We had uh, uh, San Diego, then Tucson, then Albuquerque. So overall, the visitation is pretty similar. Um, and then for Kingman area specific, I just wanted to share Okay, is, is it showing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, yes. you see the US, uh, the country map? Yeah. Yeah, okay, it, it's not, it's usually it's highlighted in green so I can tell that it's shared. Um, okay, hold on a sec, let me, let me try that again. It, it's blocked up on me. Okay, so for Kingman specifically, um, it shows Maricopa County um, as the real hot spot, and then over in um, Nevada and Southern California. If this is by county, so it's showing um, each county broken down. But if you add Los Angeles, San Bernardino, Riverside, Orange County, all of those in the greater Los Angeles area, just like it showed for Mojave County in general, that is our largest market in Kingman. So this is the hotels. I'm just going to flip over and show what we're seeing from our ball players. This is for the, the calendar year in 2020. So you can see most of the ball players coming also from California and a lot from uh, Southern Nevada um, and then all over Arizona. Um, and our Route 66 traffic is um, once again, mostly Arizona, California, Southern Nevada. So that's, that's really mirroring what we're seeing from the state in general or what they're reporting from Mojave County. And I've got one other presentation I want to share with you, and I and likely I'll I'll be sharing um, this information at the uh, the next meeting if we have new commissioners because there's some really good background information, uh, not this one. Okay, so this is some data that Arizona Office of Tourism had released. Um, 
This is domestic visitation. You can see quarter one and two in 2020 was down. They haven't tabulated uh, the next quarter, um, quarter three yet. Uh, domestic overnight visitation to Arizona, um, down about 48%. Um, and then visitation to Arizona for, uh, this is breaking out between business and leisure. So 66% down business, 45% down leisure. Um, and then overnight visitation uh, for overnight resident versus non-Arizona resident um, and non-resident down 53%. So you're, you're seeing a little bit more from in, in Arizona. International visitation, so that's actually in uh, thousands. So the total negative 4,612 is actually 4,612,000. Um, a lot of it down for Mexico, Canada. What really affects us is Canada and Europe and Asia. Overall um, change and then what the projection is. So we're looking at about 2024 where we'll fully recover from where we were in 2019. Um, and then overall spending, um, actually, let me bump up to number 17, no, 14, there we go. Yeah, so travel spending in Arizona, um, this is compared to the year before, this is year over year change. So you saw it was, you know, almost nothing in April with negative four, uh, 90% in October, negative 60%. Um, and then the jobs supported by um, travel. So 2018 or 2019, 2020, you'll see quite the, uh, quite the change. Um, actually, I want to jump ahead here. Yeah, to slide 17. So this is gross sales by sector. So amusement for Mojave County, you'll see that that was down 29%. And then restaurant bar for Mojave County, down about 18%. Um, retail, Mojave County, um, has actually gone up 15%. And this, I believe this also includes online shopping. So it's not just going to be the transactions that are taking place at stores, um, um, in person and the Mojave County 10% up for hotels. So, um, we're actually doing pretty okay. That includes Kingman and uh, Lake Havasu City and Bullhead. So, although we were down by uh, you know a few percentage points, um, overall Mojave County did really well because of the the parks and everything that was open up along the river. And hotel room demand. Um, so our our demand was down by a few percentage points overall for the state. Um, it's been down you know twenty percent plus. And for Mojave County, about ten percent. I'm gonna jump up again. There's just a lot of slides and there's some key ones that I wanted to, to share with you. Airbnb, so um, we do have a growing Airbnb uh, uh, market here in Kingman. And this is what's uh, been taking place with demand and kind of a, a forecast of what they think is gonna happen. Um, and, oops, I'm sorry. There's one, here's the average day's lead time. So you can see that uh, it, it uh, kind of dropped the number of days that people were booking in advance um, this year compared to what it was um, in previous years. And then one more set of slides. National park visitation. So 2020 is the dark line on the bottom. Um, that's how it's really been affected. Uh, national parks, I know they talk a lot about um, a lot of visitation at the national parks, but it's, it's actually is down from what it was before. And Grand Canyon National Park um, has been down about 58% um, year over year. So, and if anyone would like to look at, at the full report or any of those numbers, I'd be happy to share that with you. Just let me know. Uh -huh. and that's all that I have. Anybody have any questions for Josh? That's a great. Yeah, report. I would love to get a copy of the report. Me too. Absolutely. That's some really good info. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Good job. One thing too that uh, Josh didn't mention when he's on these uh, these with these tour promoters, 
is to we've really told them about the enhanced parking that we have available now for for tour buses we as you know we repaved that area behind the powerhouse near the tracks and so uh they then laid uh, josh then laid it out to accommodate about four or five buses and then our bus parking in town so that we made them aware of it we're going to stay right on top of the tour bus thing so that uh, we, we hit the ground running post COVID, you know, and that's, that's probably been the one thing that, that, that Josh and the team we've focused on is what are we doing to prepare ourselves for, as we start to come out of this? Are there other things or staff that we that need to put in place? And so that'll be our emphasis as we certainly move towards the budget, uh, Madam Chair. So. Hmm. No, okay. Noted. Yes. No, we're, we're Questions? Okay, moving on. Okay, Bennett. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Chairman Sixta and Commissioners. Um, I'm going to go through a few updates out here at the industrial park, um, starting out with the 1,800-acre uh, land release that we've been working on. Um, we've been working closely with the FAA, um, with uh, the airport manager, current airport manager Joe Husband. Uh, and I uh, and staff with Lisa, um, just uh, really making some good progress there. Some items that we've uh, recently submitted to the FAA uh, just this month um, is a cultural resource review. Um, we also submitted the land release agency scoping letter, an updated EPA exhibit uh, based on the comments that we received back from the FAA. Um, we completed the phase one environmental due diligence audit and also the biologi biological uh, evaluation. All those items were sent over to the FAA, um, which we'll uh, discuss with them on our next scheduled meeting, which will take place on February 10th. Uh, so that we've been very um, happy with the progress that we've been making with them. Uh, and that's been moving along very well. And we've also been um, working on some new marketing documents. One of those documents is a, uh, it's a aerial overhead of the industrial park and the airport. Hmm. Uh, on that, uh, we have all the businesses that we've had and any of the new businesses that we've, uh, you know, um, brought over the last uh, few years. And so it'll be a, a whole list of those businesses as well as uh, where they're located in the, in the park. Uh, so this tool will be used to uh, show uh, the diversity of our uh, businesses that we have out here from the air side to the industrial side. Um, on the uh, rail, uh, we've uh, pretty much stayed level there with regards to uh, cars that we've had stored out here as well as industry um, and cars that they've had switched into their businesses. So in October of 2020, we had 618 cars stored. In November, 468. And in December, four, another 468, the same amount. Um, and then uh, in regards to cars switched, in October, we had 172. Uh, November, 136, and we had the same amount in December, 136. Um, we have been talking with uh, various industries uh, that will need uh, rail um, and I'll go over um, a few of those businesses uh, that we've uh, been trying to recruit uh, a little bit later. Um, we've been, we hired a um, landscape group. We went through an RFP process uh, and they are doing maintenance uh, for the entryway into the industrial park and the airport all the way from Route 66 down Mojave Airport Drive uh, in all the way to um, flight line. So that whole uh, entryway will be um, maintained, uh, meaning the, the weeds will be, um, you know, cut at a low level um, and any trees and shrubbery that need to be trimmed and maintained will be, uh, that'll take place. Uh, particularly under the bridge as you come in, we have a lot of uh, shrubbery and landscaping in that area. We also, um, you know, because of our location, we get a lot of tumbleweeds that come into the area. Uh, it'll be their their job to continue to maintain that, keep the tumbleweeds out and free and clear of any of that debris. So uh, that started January 1st of uh, this year. Uh, we had a um, project that we've been working on, Lisa uh, and I have been working on for 
over a year and that was the demolition of a, an old building out here on uh, King and uh, owned property that we have. It was an old, uh, used for different things over the years, but I think the last thing that it was used for was a shock center for uh, youth and the sheriff's um, oh, okay. office used that facility. It's it's uh, over the years, they hadn't used it probably for 10 years. And uh, basically it was in a, a condemned type situation that was uh, unsafe. And um, so we, we put together our RFP on that. We got a great price and just completed last week the demolition of all the rest of the buildings on that uh, property. By doing that, we were able to take three parcels um, that that the lot sat on. It sat on three separate, two small parcels and one a little, little bit larger. We combined those to create one parcel, 3.6 acres, which is a good size to be able to market to uh, industry. I do have some pictures of that. I'm going to try to share my screen. Um, Hopefully you'll be able to see this here. Okay, so um, can everybody see that? So this is the uh, site um, right here. And we had uh, four buildings that were on this uh, property. Um, here is a picture of, let's see. There's a picture of the uh, the work uh, in the initial start of the project. And then I just have a picture of the completed project, uh, which is right here. Um, so typically we'll leave the foundations uh, to the properties and require, uh, sometimes we can require that to be cleaned up by the by the new owner coming in to purchase the property, but it's a, it's a negotiating term uh, when talking with businesses. So let's see. We can get back to uh, okay. All right. Uh, I guess I should have kept sharing. I got another project that we've been working on for quite a, uh, probably about six months, a little bit more than that since the project started. Um, we've done an announcement on that. You guys are, it's probably been in, in some other updates that I've done over the, uh, the past months. And this is Colt Builders. Um, that project is moving along very uh, nicely. Uh, it's actually ahead of schedule. Uh, and just as a reminder, um, that project's going to bring roughly uh, over a three-phase um, period, uh, which is, uh, I believe, three years, um, 50 jobs, and about $9 million in capital investment into that uh, project. I do have some uh, pictures. If, if you guys have not been out here lately, I'll, I'll show you uh, where that site was and some recent uh, photos of uh, the erection of that building. So let me just share the screen one more time. So this is the site. It was actually um, land that was a privately owned uh, by Bulk Industrial. Um, they uh, they owned this property and it was one whole parcel. Uh, what they did is they uh, subdivided off um, or parceled off uh, 10 acres uh, adjacent to the property. And so this will be the location. There's a rail spur. Um, one of their needs was rail. Uh, and that's when they were looking at uh, locating uh, out here at the industrial, or basically they were looking at their West Coast opportunities. Um, they ended up settling on Kingman because of the rail option that we had, uh, as well as obviously the, the proximity to market. We also had another, um, uh, the, this company right next to it is a wood truss manufacturer. And um, what Colt does is they manufacture um, trust panels for uh, apartment complexes. So, you know, we do have that, that workforce um, component that, uh, and the rail, the location, all of those things tied in to make it a good fit. Um, here's a picture of, um, Uh, 
and you can see that this is the erection uh, of the building one of the cool things with this one is it, it was uh the project um had a um, time frame in order to start um, this the building of the of the building had to be done within a certain time frame because they were doing a 1031 exchange and so we worked very closely with the um, the county and um, our uh, city departments um, that uh, had to sign off on different things as well to get them to the point where they were able to um, to break ground uh, get the slab in and start construction and uh, qualify for that 1031 exchange so they're very happy with working with the city and the county and uh, getting this project uh, to its current um, place where it is right now so um, other uh, just talk a few of, a little bit about some other recruitment opportunities that we're working on and uh, i'm gonna speak to them as uh, project names because uh, they're still uh, in the confidential confidentiality uh, stage. One project is called Project uh, Rosie. And the first time that we con they contacted us, they actually reached out to us through our website. Uh, and that was back in July of 2020. Um, this project, um, the cool thing is it, it needs a, a lot of space. So they need about 200,000 square foot. It is an expansion um, or actually a relocation, somewhat of an expansion out of California. So, um, you know, it, it's nice to be able to uh, um, recruit and pull those businesses out of California. And that's, that's what we did in this case. So we're re really close uh, to a decision on this project. Um, it's gonna be about uh, 60 uh, net new jobs uh, to the area and then the releasing of 200,000 square foot of vacant space uh, out here. Uh, this last week, um, Joe and I met with a um, project called, we call Mockup, which is uh, they do uh, for the movie industry, they do uh, um, kind of, they, they do airplane uh, sets and things like that that they um, send out to uh, um, work on uh, different uh, movies that are going through the process. So uh, this is a, this would also be a relocation of the business out of California. So we're re really excited to continue to work with them. We, we are currently looking for different sites uh, in the industrial park, as well as potentially on the airfield side for this project. The last thing I guess I want to close with is uh, we were basically approved our engineering plans for the uh, road project out at the industrial park that we got the grant for back in um, 2020. Um, this project was a, a grant we received 275,000 for to rehabilitate um, some roads out here. This is a phase one of this project and this will uh, we're going to be sending it out for bid documents uh, this month. Hopefully get going on this. Um, should be about a six month or less construction build out. Uh, and so we're excited to get that done. That'll complete um, a road called Port Way, which will run from finance all the way down to Olympic. Um, and that road is basically non-existent it used to be a road and it just deteriorated to the point where there's nothing there so the completion of this road will do a lot for the businesses around that area as well as for the the way the airport and the industrial park um, looks so with that uh, that is all my um, update if there are any questions I'd be happy to answer them thank you any questions for bennett wow you guys are on it no questions um, great reporting. Thank you. Moving on to the airport. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chairman, uh, members of the commission. Uh, once again, it's Joe Husband. I'm still the interim airport manager, although we are working uh, diligently towards filling the, the permanent uh, airport general manager position. Um, and I'll, I'll report on that right now. We, we actually had um, a 
number of candidates from all across the country and even one from outside the country. Uh, I think we had 15 or 16 candidates of which we have selected uh, six as initial finalists to interview. Uh, we've got interviews scheduled uh, coming up on uh, February, I believe it's the 17th. And we will uh, complete those initial interviews and then uh, get down to some finalists and we'll finish the final selection, uh, hopefully sometime in um, late February, early March. And then it'll be just a matter of, uh, of determining when the uh, selected candidate can begin. Um, and then you will be rid of me for uh, some period of time, uh, uh, hopefully uh, forever. Uh, not that I have not and have not and also am, are continuing to enjoy uh, my assignment here at Kingman Airport. I, as I mentioned before, I was here two years ago during the transition and, and it was a real pleasure, has been and will continue to be a real pleasure for me to come back. So we're working on that. We've got a couple other uh, operations and maintenance uh, staff vacancies that we're working on filling currently. Uh, the big news really around the airport uh, the last couple of days or this week is of course the snow. Um, uh, we actually closed our runways uh, yesterday evening about 7 p.m. and we just during this uh, meeting time have reopened them. Um, the snow is essentially all gone. Uh, ice, we're down to just mostly uh, wet conditions and even some uh, dry conditions. So the airport is back open. Uh, we're hopeful that uh, the precipitation uh, is done or at least the frozen, the solid precipitation uh, is through falling out of the sky and will remain open. So uh, that was just as it is out on the roads uh, and around town um, for this uh, climate, uh, uh, kind of an unusual occurrence for the airport, especially here in Kingman, Arizona. So snow, no more, uh, at least not this year. Uh, I reported at our last meeting that we were in the process of surrendering our part 139 certificate. That's the airport operating certificate that's issued uh, to the airport by the FAA that allows the airport to operate and conduct commercial passenger operations. Well, we haven't had any passenger operations here for uh, about three years um, and um, we've not got any prospects. So we've surrendered that certificate. It streamlines uh, the operating requirements of the airport uh, and to a degree also helps us with uh, some of cost control. So we, we've completed that process. We uh, uh, had the surrender of the certificate uh, approved by our airport advisory commission as well as city council. Uh, we've, uh, we've checked with the FAA to ensure there are no uh, potential ramifications of surrendering the certificate. Uh, and what I mean by that is when we take grant monies from the FAA and particularly associated with, um, with facilities or equipment uh, that support that 139 certificate, you have to complete your, your minimum service life for those or your minimum obligatory period. So anyway, the FAA has assured us there are no uh, ramifications of surrender. And so uh, last week we issued a surrender letter uh, to the FAA and this week we received their acknowledgement letter. I uh, just received that today. So that is done. We're uh, poised that in the event that uh, commercial service interests uh, return and their airlines who'd like to uh, begin using uh, the airport here to serve uh, the Kingman, the greater Kingman area, then we're ready to go back to the FAA and reestablish, reacquire that certificate. It, it is a process, but it's not a, it's not insurmountable, especially in a situation where we had this uh, certificate once and we've surrendered it under good terms. So uh, that's complete, that process, at least for now. Um, we also have completed and gotten final approval of our airport master plan, which is a a 20-year planning horizon document uh, similar to the city's general plan which really identifies the um, um, you know the direction the capital investment the, the forecasts for uh, traffic needs and, and aircraft needs of the air, airport for the future that has been finally completed after a two-year process uh, i say it's been completed it's been the report is entirely complete we're just waiting on the faa to sign off on the airport layout plan set which we expect will happen at any time with uh, out any significant changes. So the master plan process has been completed. If there are those of you uh, on this commission who have assisted uh, through that process by serving on some of our uh, policy advisory committees uh, or other public uh, meeting input, we want to thank you for that. 
Um, so we will be receiving uh, the final plan document soon, as I said, as soon as the FAA completes their approval process. And we'll make sure, and uh, they, they have, they produce as part of the process a very nice executive summary, which covers all of the, uh, the high level details of the, uh, of the master plan and the planning process. So we'll see that each of the commissioners actually receive one of those summaries as soon as they're available to us. It's, it's truly a summary uh, out of the many hundreds of pages that make up the master plan. It's essentially a four page uh, tabloid uh, fold up um, with some nice graphics on it as well as the, the important information. So we'll see that you get some of those uh, when they're uh, prepared for us. Uh, I think uh, Bennett covered most of the business development things that we've been doing out here. There's one thing that we do have a, a temporary operator. They're a company that operates at the two other locations uh, in the United States. They actually do aircraft storage, aircraft dismantling, similar to similar to the, some of the other operators here at the airport. They're trying to come in and do a 90 day temporary permit to do some uh, dismantle of an aircraft. And they are, you know, they're potentially a, a, a viable contender for future because they're they currently have two um, locations. One is uh, in the eastern part of the United States. Uh, I think it's Ohio, if I remember correctly. One's in the central portion of the United States in Missouri. And then they're looking for a West Coast location. And so this could potentially be a good opportunity for uh, some future development here. Uh, so we're working with them. As I said, we right now it's, a, it's just a three month uh, permit that they need to do some work, uh, but they're looking at us as well as many of the other operators as, as Bennett mentioned. This is, uh, our airport is, is well suited to storage and uh, parts provisioning and disassembly of aircraft. And we continue to develop in that way. And it's it's been a fairly uh, sizable portion of our operating revenues over the years. So uh, we continue to look for those opportunities and, and they're coming to us. Um, we mentioned to you at the last uh, meeting, um, Madam Chairman, members of the commission that um, we had been approached by uh, a firm in the UK that was working on behalf of um, electric aircraft um, manufacturers, if you will. And they're looking for a location for the, what they call the Air Race E, uh, which is essentially an aircraft, an air race, an aircraft race uh, that utilizes electrically powered aircraft. And so uh, we had submitted the initial package. We worked with Josh and Sylvia and um, you know, others here in the city to, to supply. Lisa actually put the uh, uh, final application packet together for us. And we submitted that to the firm that is working on behalf of the manufacturers. And, and we have, uh, they haven't developed their shortlist yet, but we do have a follow-up meeting with them next week just to, for them to answer any questions that we might have and for us to answer any questions that, that they might have on the initial application uh, that's been submitted. And uh, Bennett mentioned the, uh, the landscaping improvements, both the landscaping service as well as we're trying to do also the landscaping improvements to the uh, terminal. Uh, and we also are going to do some painting, uh, exterior painting of the terminal that's coming up here and probably within the next uh, couple, three weeks. Um, I believe, Madam Chairman, members of the commission, that's all that I have to report at this time. And I would be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you, Mr. Huskins. Any questions? Uh, yes. I, uh, you said you relinquished your certification with the FAA for commercial aircraft. Is that correct? Was the reason for that monetary or just other reasons? Well, I guess when you, uh, Mr. Commissioner and Madam Chairman, when you get right down to it, it is monetary. It's, it's also there are a number of uh, more stringent requirements that come with uh, operating an airport that's certificated to um, to have passenger service. And uh, that, that has to do with the uh, uh, fire protection at the airport, uh, inspections, enforcements, record keeping, training, a lot of things. So by surrendering and skipping, we no longer have to do that. And then that of course does translate into, into money. Uh, but I'll be, the, the bigger issue really is we, I don't believe we're effectively fulfilling our obligations under the certificate. And that leaves the airport at risk uh, to uh, not complying with the regulatory requirements. 
And so it is much better for us to take ourselves out of that risk and save some money than to continue and really unnecessarily because we don't have commercial service. Um, and in this current market, I, I don't see it returning, uh, at least for some time. Uh, many times, the commercial service at an airport, we like to say the airport's the last to know, uh, because really it has to do with the fact that airlines will research markets and determine where it makes sense for them to, um, to provide services. And so then they'll reach out. Now, in, in some cases, there are grants that are available that we get that we're able to supplement or subsidize aircraft service. I'm going probably a little bit deeper in the weeds, but the bottom line is there doesn't appear to be significant demand and it really didn't make sense for us to keep the certificate. So yes, it was about money, but it was also equally about uh, the airport and our regulatory requirements and make sure that the airport maintains itself in good standing with um, all regulators and all persons within the industry. I hope that answered your question and was not too late. Thank you, Joe, it does. Thank you for elaborating. Uh, I concur. And I kind of figured that's pretty much, it, it reaches out to the whole structure of the airport and mandates, things like that. So thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Commissioner. And and, and I wanna reiterate, you know, we've worked very well with the, um, it's the FAA Safety and Standards Branch who actually issues those certificates. Uh, we've worked very well with them over the year and they're, they have committed to should we need to get that back, they'll make sure that they're in a position to meet the time frame that we need to meet, uh, should we need to reacquire that in the future. Yes. Okay, any other questions for Mr. Husband? Thank you very much. Okay, Gary, money. Oh, okay, Madam Chair. Uh, one of the things I'd just like to expound a little bit on what uh, Joe was, uh, talking about. We also are in actively seeking a grant. Uh, one came up through the state of Arizona to uh, completely restore the tower. Uh, a few years ago, we got a grant that actually evaluated the airport tower. And uh, just as a brief history lesson, that's one of three towers left in the United States, the other smaller versions in Yucca, and there is one in Florida and uh, they were actually like an erector set put in by the Dell Webb company. And so uh, uh, Bill Schilling, uh, who does our grant work, is actually seeking a grant now. We will be able to, if we get the grant, restore the tower, but it'll, it'll never be able to be open to the public. We can't meet the safety requirements, but one of the things we'd like to do is make sure that it lives on, you know, for several generations because it is truly unique and it, it is kind of the center post when you come into the airport. So, you know, we're currently working on that. And uh, I just have to say really quick, uh, Joe has rejoined us and uh, as many of you may, may or might not know, uh, the airport operations have moved out from underneath uh, myself and have gone to public works. And so uh, uh, Joe and the, uh, the new manager and stuff will report up through public works. Uh, Joe did a lot of work studying what's the best place for them to be and public works with their equipment, with their needs, the paving and all those other things. It really came out to be that that was the right place for this to happen. So, so uh, the uh, council has approved it. That took place on January the 4th, uh, but are, we still work hand in hand because everything that we do certainly on the industrial side in the park and that money, as you know, moves over to support the airport. So, there will always be a, a, a tight hand holding there. So uh, we may be in other departments, but we are still uh, part of a, a team to, for the success of the airport. So, but I just wanted to update you on that because one of the things that's key is I'm gonna be meeting with uh, Crystal uh, Burge out there, as you know, who owns the restaurant. And we have made all the, on the terminal building, we, re we fixed everything up. We recreated that World War II atmosphere and if you get a chance to go out there, the pilot's lounge is like walking into your grandmother or great-grandmother's living room, okay? We did 40 vintage, just about everything, including a 48-star flag and a number of other things. And so uh, Crystal and I talked a few years ago when we first took over about making the restaurant and theming it more in that World War II and making it kind of special. So we'll be meeting and discussing that actually this week uh, to see where we can go with that. And so 
As Joe alluded to, the other thing that's gonna take place is there, we had to look at a drainage issue in front there and then a, a, a redo of, of the landscaping front of the terminal. So to really take advantage of, you know, the history piece that we have there. So with that, uh, I want to talk a little bit about monument signs. Um, several months ago, uh, the city manager, Public Works, ADOT, and myself uh, toured all of the off-ramps and, and on-ramps here in Kingman off uh, Interstate. And N93. And so what we were looking at was saying, could we create monuments that, like a lot of communities do, that really are special? And so we took a look and, and identified all the locations. We then went to Geo and Associates, and that was, if you all remember, the folks that we used to uh, create our new logo. And so we said, can you give us some ideas here? Take that logo and incorporate it. So they came back to us with some a number of different ideas. We then called together a, a marketing group, and uh, and these are a number of marketing folks in, in the community. And we sat down uh, for about two or three hours and went over them. They tweaked a number of things that went back to GEO. GEO came back with some other designs. And so we then took one step further because it looks like the logo would really nicely fit you know, and, and can really be enhanced by using some of that rock and those those large rocks out of Ash Fort, where they use the beautiful stone slabs and everything. So they've been working with us in Ash Fort. And so we come up with a number of ideas. Well, lo and behold, you know, you always have that thing, you find out, wow, somebody else is involved or can be involved, it can really help. The, the engineering company and everything that is doing all the work on the restoration of Main Street has very strong expertise in this area. So a few weeks ago, I shipped everything that we had put together from the marketing group and everything and Geo uh, to uh, Jack Plante over at Public Works and he's the main contact uh, with that company doing the work. They have the expertise and have done this with monuments and everything because in order to be an ADOT right away, there's a number of things you have to be able to do, breakaways and all that sort of stuff. And so they are experts in the area. So now they have it in their hands and they will be coming back to us. When they do, then I will certainly come back to the commission, share that with you. Or we'll, we'll get a couple of opportunities to kick this thing around again. But now we have some folks who maybe can take and put the final polish on the apple and bring it back to us. So uh, I, I think it'll look really nice. Uh, they've looked at number of things, whether it's rusted metal logo on the on the back of that sandstone or uh, laser uh, carved or sandblasted right into the rock and everything. So there's there's a number of ideas, but it's uh, I think it'll look pretty nice, but it'll make something that'll make you, wow, I've, cut, I've come here and this is what Kingman looks like. Uh, it's a tough one because we have the three interchanges. We don't have a place where you could put a gigantic monument up, you know, without causing some issues because then we got remember we have those two new uh interchanges coming in the near future right and so you know where would these th where would this go so so that's where we are right now and so we're working on that and uh we'll bring it back to the commission let you all take a look at it when they put this other designs together and give us some options there so the other thing that i'd like to just give you a, a heads up on we continue and josh mentioned it to work on the expansion of the EV museum. I will tell you guys, we tried uh, unsuccessfully. We thought we had a couple of really nice sponsors over the last year that could really pick this thing up. Uh, one of them being a, a renowned electric car company, but it, it didn't fly. So we're continuing because it is, you know, I think especially now with, with the new administration in Washington, there is a heavy emphasis on, on on EVV, on vehicles. And so we wanna certainly take advantage of the fact that we have this unique collection because not only what the 60 or 70, or the, I'm sorry, the, the ones that are about 20 or 30 that Josh has in the powerhouse, but we have an additional 200 autos stored all over the place. And this most recent acquisition of this uh, electric Porsche, and also uh, this one that'll come out of the, uh, the museum down in Laughlin, these are really, truly unique automobiles. And so we're gonna continue to work on that. And, uh, and, and Ron has asked, asked me uh, to, to really try to find that, that building. So 
Uh, Madam Chair, one of the things we did look at, that state building downtown is could be a nice spot, but it's a million plus on the, the market. So you know, if we had a benefactor that said, here's the building, we think we have a, a, a benefactor that would pick up the remodeling costs and stuff like that. So we're working on it. Uh, if any of you have any ideas you'd like to share, just please contact myself or Josh and, and we're gonna continue to, to really work on that. So um, with that, I, I just wanna add a couple of things. Um, I always wanna give a tip of the hat certainly to the team. And uh, one of the things that has taken place is uh, Bennett didn't mention it, but Colt people were so thrilled about the way they were treated here in Kingman and, and the fact that Bennett literally walked them through a number of processes with the county and the city. They, they flew, the three primary partners flew in here and, and uh, thanked him. So um, he, he didn't say that, but they left a beautiful note and everything. And so uh, and have agreed that in the future they would do a testimonial. And, and a, as you know, in our business or any of our businesses, there's nothing better than a nice testimonial from a, from a happy client. So uh, that was with Cole. And then the other thing is, is on the retail side, what people don't see is all the work. You know, Cal Ranch just didn't pop up one day. Uh, Sylvia negotiated continually and then I know Ben is certainly was involved with her. We were all kind of were, but Sylvia was the lead with back and forth with the developer and everything. And then the same thing, we have been nursing that Harbor Freight thing now for over three years. And uh, they were all over the map on locations. And we kept telling them, you know, your store will be highly successful here if you were in a basement in the middle of nowhere, because there is such a demand for that particular brand for that stuff style of tools and everything so finally that was landed so uh, again it's, it's really all the team it's josh working on those with those folks on the tours and everything and like i said this whole team really is focused on where we are today but what are we doing to take steps post covid you know i think that we can't lose sight of it you know as it begins to come out are, are, are we one step ahead of, of the other folks so that's really what I wanted to share with you, Madam Chair and the and the committee. So if you have any questions of me, I'd certainly be happy to answer them. Um, anybody have any questions? No, none. Okay. okay thank, you. thank you. New business. Uh, the EDAC uh, commission terms. I wanted to talk about um, a couple of things with the commission. Number one, I wanna throw my hat in the ring to chair this commission. And um, I would need votes to do that. And then, um, so do we vote on it right away or how does that work? Okay, Madam Chair, we can, we can do it. Either way, uh, you have a quorum today, so we would we, we could pick from this group a chair and vice chair, okay. or we or we could actually we have coming before council on the second uh, three uh, possible candidates to fill the two openings because this one would be for uh, for Jim Hinckley who is not uh, did not uh, want to resume his position, and the other one would be for for Gene. So. Uh, I guess, Madam Chair, that would be you and the commission's decision. It could be done today if, if, I, if, I, if the group is comfortable with that. And we can- Larry, just... I think it has to be on the agenda to vote in a chair. So I think it'd have to be- Oh, so we'd have to put one meeting off then. I'm sorry. Okay, he's right. Hmm. Uh, I, I guess... actually asked for that to be on the agenda. Um, I guess it got missed. Um, so- okay request for the next meeting two months away. Right, and we can we can do that. And then your, your entire group would be, uh, your, two new, your two new people will be appointed by council. So. Okay, I, I just wanna say something really quick. I want to be involved in what's going on. I mean, uh, I would like to be, if you're having a marketing study with people around town, is it okay if you invite me as well? I mean, I'd like to know about that if you're inviting citizens. I really feel like um, 
I, you guys do an incredible job and I envy and honor you for what you do, but I want to be involved in that part of it as well. Not just being reported to, but being involved on, a, you know, a day to day, week by week, month to month basis so that it's not so one sided to the point where you guys tell us all this stuff and it's amazing and it's great. And I just wish I could jump in and be a part of that. I don't know if that's allowed because I'm on the commission. I've done, I've spoken with a couple of other mayors and people on commissions, and it seems to be pretty basic that if if you're going to have a marketing study with citizens, you you would at least invite us um, and say, do you want to be there? We certainly can I do that. Be there. We certainly can do that, and we have. Uh, you know, Steve knows we he's been involved in, in a couple of the committees where we did the marketing thing. And uh, so, oh, you know, and absolutely. So we will, we will always, I will make sure that we always bring it up to the commission and let you know what, what we're doing in those areas. Or even if it's off meeting times, that we'll notify you. Yeah, such. it doesn't have to be the meeting time, but if we're establishing monuments and signs, I would like to be a part of that. If you're pulling in citizens, I would think that as an advisory committee member, that my opinion would matter on that and that, and I would like it to, you know, I would like to say, oh, that's great. Or, you know, I don't agree with that. Instead of a position where I'm just being reported to, this is what we decided, this is what we've done. I, I guess I want to be more hands-on. Okay. understand. Oh, we can certainly, okay, okay, that's fine. We can, <laughs> we can certainly do that. So, um, yeah, I know that we we worked on a number of things last year, and and, and uh, I mean, Steve can jump in here because we did. He helped us with a number of things, you know, as far as from coming from the commission, and he was instrumental in uh, in, in actually one of our new uh, uh, highway signs. And so, you know, again with those ideas, so we will we will make sure, Madam Chair, that we uh, we do yeah, that. So, I'm not care. aware of that. Um, I, my, the reason I knew about Cal West and Arbor Freight was because my ex is actually GC on the deal. I didn't know. I didn't know. And so I was asked about it and I'm like, oh, I don't know. We, I don't know. We can't, you know, and I will tell you, that's the one thing they, we, we hold it in confidentiality until the company tells us they can do it, whether it be Colt or Cal Ranch or anybody. So, so we, we, I know. We, we, that's why we, Deborah, that's why we use the names, for example, of uh, the code names. So when they're ready, then, you know, then we, we don't, and I will just tell you, and working with uh, Harbor Freight, it, it was really touchy as we came down to the last, because the lease was back and forth and back and forth. And then, then they said to Sylvia, it's okay, let her go. So I actually um, am a commercial agent familiar with NDAs and the process. I'm not saying that you have to divulge, you know, information that you shouldn't or names of a project. I'm just saying, if you have a citizen steering committee, I would like to be part of that. I understand. Okay. Any questions of me? All right, anybody else? Um, announcements, let's go to announcements. Anyone? Okay, then anything else from anybody else? Questions? Okay. Okay, just for clarification then, we will make sure that on the next agenda, it will be the voting of okay. the chair, the chair and vice yeah. chair then, okay. I, I, so let me just clarify. If we want something on the agenda, we don't tell Lisa or how does that work because you I was. Set, you set the agenda with Lisa. We'll create it and then you okay, take it. Okay, that's yes. what I thought. Yes. Yeah, that's why I thought it was there. Okay. That's correct. Well, um, then thank you everyone. This meeting for the Economic Development Commission City, City of Pingman is adjourned. Uh, thank you.